friends, welcome or welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today I just have a regular video for you, so I hope you enjoy it. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and I'm so happy you stopped by today. And if you're returning, welcome back. I am so grateful you're here as well. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. Okay, so we start out on this DIY by using this um, decal I printed with my Cricut or cut out with my Cricut. Some of these reed sticks I got off Amazon and a couple of these long signs from the Dollar Tree. So I'm, oh, and also my elephant and white Waverly chalk paint. So I'm gonna start off by taking the hearts off of these signs and then I am actually gonna use the back as the front so I'm removing the hanger here um, they were just stapled on and then after that I I'm going to add these jumbo popsicle sticks I'm using some wood glue and hot glue and I just went I think I had like five or six all the way up um, the back side which was the front side now is the back side just so that uh, it connects them all together <clears throat> excuse me and then after that, I paint the whole, uh, what is now the back or front, <laughs> white. And then I'm just taking these sticks and I'm just kind of measuring the um, sizes that I need. And then I'm going to use my miter shears and I am going to cut them all down to the size that I need. And then once I have them all cut down, oh, well, here I'm just kind of, I knew I needed a top and a bottom the same size, so I just used that other stick to measure and then once I had them all cut out I'm using my chalk paint in the color elephant and I painted them all with that elephant gray color and then I'm just using again my wood glue and hot glue and I am gluing them all down in place to make like a frame and then I took another one and this one is going in the middle well kind of in the middle of the the door we're making a barn door here <clears throat> and then I am just making um, them cutting the ends to be at an angle. And I'm sorry this isn't in view where I cut them. The board was kind of big <laughs> for my table. But I'm just using my um, miter shears there. You can move the little knob around to cut at an angle. You could probably see it a little bit better there. And so then I realized, okay, I have to cut them straight on these so that they don't go over the one that's already laying there so just like you see there and just connect it so once I had them all cut out and fitting like they were supposed to I'm going to glue them down with that wood glue and hot glue just like I did before and then after that I took some more elephant chalk paint and I'm just doing my distressing figured this time I remembered to do it before I added my decal <laughs> and then here I am just um, <clears throat> burnishing this decal onto my top portion of my barn door and I will try to remember to um, I think I did save this so if I did I will have a link to it in my description box <clears throat> and if it doesn't work please let me know I'm still learning how to do all of this kind of stuff and uh, so if, if it's not working, I need to know so I can figure it out correctly. But I think I know what, how to do it. So then I took an, um, one of these door handles that I got off of Amazon and I just used some super glue and hot glue and glued it on. Then I just took a mint, one of these small wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And I am just adding some boxwood greenery to it and I'm just tying it down with some floral wire. And then once I had it all on there, I just took my bow, made the awareness ribbon, scrunch it up, and I am just using some twine to keep it in place. And after looking at this, I kind of think I might go back where I add this bow and add a little bit more boxwood. It looks a little flat on top, um, but I'm just gonna add this. I'm going to get a zip tie and put it behind that bow, in between the bow and the, the twine that I used. And then I'm just going to add that to the top part of that wreath form. And then I'm going to use hot glue it to glue it in place. Um, but you might want to use something a little heavier. It took a little while to get it to stick. Then I'm just going to cover the back with some shipping paper. 
peacock gluing it all down so that way the back is all nice and pretty. If you want this to hang, you could always use a hanger. Um, I am going to have this above my kitchen cabinet, so I'm not going to have it hang, so I didn't put a hanger on it. But there it is. You have to let me know what you think. I just love it. I, I've been wanting to do a barn door for a while now, and I just love the way this came out. You can find the links in my description box to all my social media accounts and all the other accounts that I'm affiliated with in my link tree down below. And here is DIY number two. So for this DIY, you guys, I'm using again my Waverly chalk paints in the color white and elephant. Another decal I made with my Cricut and this window from Dollar Tree, which I've been seeing them at Dollar Tree again. Some of this vellum paper I got from Hobby Lobby. These wood blocks from Dollar Tree. Three of these mini uh, terracotta pots from Dollar Tree. Some of these wildflowers from Dollar Tree, some floral foam, and then these uh, stickers from Dollar Tree. I do end up using some lavender too because I didn't have enough of those wildflowers. So I started off by taking that little sign. It was just made off cardboard off the front. It was just hot glued on. And then the back unscrews. And so I took it off because, you know, I figure I could use that on something else that's not needed. So I painted everything white there. I painted um, the sign. I mean, the window, the blocks, the terracotta pots, and then this little wood piece. I'm going to use this instead of that car um, cardboard piece that I took off. So I painted them all white. And here I'm just using my... Um, elephant gray to do some distressing so I distressed the that plaque I distressed all of the four um, blocks I distressed the little mini pots and then I'm going to do the windows and when I did the windows I'm not going to show you this but I actually went and did all in between each little crevice there it took me a little while <laughs> to get it all done but once it was all dry I'm just taking some super glue here and then I'll take a little bit of hot glue and I'm just putting it on um, around on different areas of this windowsill so that that vellum um, paper can uh, stick and stay in place. So you see there I just did the super glue here I'm doing some hot glue and then I'm just going to place it there. <clears throat> and then once I am done with that, I have to pull off the excess glue there. <laughs> um, I am going to take my decal and I realized, oh my goodness, this is too big. And, and I had sized this to the little uh, cardboard thing that we took off the front of the um, window. So that's why it wasn't fitting right. So I just cut my transfer paper a little bit and then I am just putting it closer together and it works out just fine. So after that, I am going to uh, use some super glue and hot glue and attach that sign. Here I'm doing it right in the middle. I did have to remove it and um, Luckily, I did it before it adhered too much and brought it up a little bit because it was a little too low and my flower pot was covering it. So then I am taking these stickers and I am just putting them on to the front of these blocks. Now, I did not do Mod Podge over it. I'm going to, I wanted to do Mod Podge over these letters just to make sure they stay on well and I forgot. So I do want to go back and do that before I um, put it up in my kitchen, but I, I would recommend that too because they're sticky but not real sticky. So then I'm just using some wood glue and again some hot glue and I am just gluing those blocks all together so that they spell home. And then after that I'm going to take that window frame and I'm going to use hot glue. Um, I was going to do wood glue and hot glue and I forgot <laughs> but um, it's it's pretty sturdy. I was thinking I could probably put a popsicle stick behind it too to keep it adhered if I need to. And then I'm just gonna cut some of this floral foam really small and I'm just sticking um, a little bit of hot glue on it. Not much, cause you don't want it to eat it away. And then I'm just sticking them in the pots. That way I have something for the flowers to stick into. And then I just cut down um, all these little uh, wildflower stems and I'm just, I actually ended up not having to cut them. I just pulled them off of the stems and then um, just start sticking them into the flower pot. And then I got some lavender and just kind of cut them down too and added them as well. <clears throat> and then here I am adding a little super glue and hot glue to the bottom of the pots. <clears throat> Sorry guys. And then I am just um, 
adhering them to the top of those blocks. And then after that, I'm going to take some um, twine and I'm gonna wrap it around my hands, I don't know, about eight times or so. And I'm sorry this is out of frame, but I just take the ends and I wrap one around the middle going one direction and the other end going the opposite direction. Um, and then just tie a knot and that's all there was. And then I'm just gonna hot glue it right onto the front. I did that three times and there it is. And I just love this little window frame. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, it is time for the celebration of your recreations. And I received um, some uh, email from Georgiana. Awesome tr Easter tradition. Their family makes Easter baskets for everybody, e even the adults. And then Marilyn, your little curler lady planters are adorable. <laughs> they were great. And then Jody, thank you so much. You did a beautiful job on these recreations. I love them. And if you have a recreation or even a creation that you want me to share with others feel free to email them to me i do have my email address in the description box below i would love to share them and here is diy number three so for this diy i am going to use this little welcome um, windmill sign i got from dollar tree last year but i know they have some this year some skewers or wooden dowels i should say and then this little block came off of a thrift flip that i had if you don't have something like that, you could always use tumbling tower blocks. So I am just trying to figure out how to remove this. And so I'm trying with my pliers there or my wire cutters and it was just too thick. So I ended up taking it out to my garage and using my Dremel on it to take it off. And then I am taking these dowels and I am cutting them at an angle like you see there. And I just do both ends and I do the opposite uh, angle on the other dowel. So then after I have those all cut, um, I'm going to paint all of that with, I showed my Nimbus, but it was too light. So I ended up painting them all black. And then once they were dry, I went with this um, silver glitter paint. It's a folk art paint that I had and I'm painting over the black. And I, the reason why I'm doing this is I didn't want to paint the windmill I kind of liked the color, so I wanted this stuff to kind of match that windmill, and I just think this turned out really good. So then I just used a little hot glue and stuck those dowels in there, not hot glue, wood glue, and stuck those dowels in there because they fit perfect, but I just wanted that glue to keep it still. And then here I just used some super glue and my accelerant to glue those um, ends of those dowels onto the back of that windmill. And I do have that accelerant in my um, Amazon store if you're interested. Then I painted a couple more dowels and I did angle these as well on the bottom. So that way when they um, sit on the back, they'll, they'll sit at an angle which causes them to lean. And then, um, oh, I had to cut them down here. And then I'm just going to use some super glue and my accelerant and I'm gonna glue them to the back of my windmill, just like you see here. And then after that, I took this little plaque that I had from Dollar Tree and I'm paint, painting this with the Nimbus. It's a super, super light gray. And so it didn't really work with what I was trying to do on the windmill, but it works for this. So once it was dry, I am taking my um, surface wax from Chalk Couture and I uh, wax that <clears throat> little block and uh, that's just to give it a smooth surface. And so here I am just fuzzing this uh, saying because I haven't used this transfer before. And since it is adhesive, you don't want it to stick too hard or when you pull it up, it could ruin the transfer. So I'm just using my black velvet paste and I'm just going over the wordings, which says um, Home Sweet Farm, I think, or Farm Sweet Farm. I can't remember, we'll see here in a minute. Home Sweet Farm, there it is. And then um, after I cleaned off my transfer, I'm taking these rub-on transfers here from Dollar Tree and I just grabbed one of the hearts and a couple of these leaves and I am just adding them to the plaque. And this you just do um, 
remove the backing and then you just use something to just rub and rub and rub and when you see the change the color just kind of changing you know it's done and then you pull out the top part of it then I'm just using my ink color which is black um, chalk paint from Waverly and I'm just going around and doing some distressing all around this and after that I am going to distress in the middle and then I am going to glue it down with some super glue and I think I use a little hot glue too yeah and I'm just going to glue that onto the windmill and there it is and then after that I'm just going to use some boxwood greenery that I pulled off a pick and I'm just putting two together and tying them with um, some floral wire and then I'm going to add two more on top of that and then I'm going to hot glue that with some flowers on the bottom of my windmill and that's all there is for this one. If you're new here, welcome. I am so glad you stopped by today. If you like what you see and you like home decor on a budget, holiday decor, thrift flips, gift ideas, then I would invite you to hit that red subscribe button and become part of our family and then let me know you are new here. I'd love to get to know you. And all of you guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and comment because that really does help my channel. It lets you two know that you like my content and it will promote it more to others who haven't seen it yet. Okay, so after that, oh yeah, I took a little black bead, half bead that I had and I'm just going to put that in the middle of the windmill because the part that was on there, I think fell on the floor in the garage and I lost it. So, <laughs> so here it is. I really love how this came out. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, here's DIY number four. So on this DIY, I'm going to use this calendar page from this calendar, uh, 2022 calendar. I am going to use this wood round that I recently got at Dollar Tree. And I was trying to look to see what size, but didn't have a size. I, my guess is it's 14 inch, but I'm not positive. So I started off by, of course, removing that hanger and I was having a little hard time there. <laughs> and then I took my um, Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I am just painting the whole round. I do end up painting the back as well. And then once I have it all painted and dried, I do some dry brushing with my mineral color chalk paint by Waverly. And the reason being is I was trying to get this to look a lot like the background of that page because I wanted it to blend well. Then I went up and down with the plaster because if you looked really closely to that page, you could see a light going the opposite direction. But then I decided, okay, well, I wanna cut this out. So I went around with my scissors and I cut as close to the wreath as I could. And then I um, also will go all around the farmhouse and cut as close to that as I could too. And I did end up having to cut the farm and house in half because it was a little too long and I couldn't get it to bend. And But it works out great this way. So I'm just using some Mod Podge here and I am just um, adding it to my board and then I add the word farmhouse and here I'm just kind of getting it all laid down and then the E and the F they have a little longer lines on the end of them so I just take my little scissors and uh, trim it down so that it's not sticking out then after that I'm just going to add Mod Podge to the back of the wreath and then I am going to add that to the top part of this sign as well and then once I have this all on, um, I forget what I do. Let me see. Oh, I'm gonna take some paint. Okay, so this is where I took some more paint and I wanted the middle of that wreath to blend more. It was a little lighter in color. So I'm just, I'm actually doing more finger painting than anything um, with the plaster color. And then I just kind of went over the word farmhouse with it too. And then used a baby wipe to just kind of wipe off the actual letter. So I wanted to kind of, get it so it wasn't so white um just to kind of help it blend in with that sign and then i just did that again with the mineral i added a little bit of the mineral to it as well and then did the same thing um, where i just kind of wiped the letters down with a baby wipe um, so that it, it was easier to read but yet it still kind of gives it that blending effect then i took some of these half beads that i got from amazon they are in my amazon store 
and I am painting them with the plaster. I just took some painter's tape and stuck them all on the plain painter's tape and then I am just using a paintbrush to brush them all on. And then um, I love this method. It, to me, it's just so much easier than any other method I've tried. <laughs> and then I also did some dry brushing with um, the uh, mineral color as well. Then I'm using this protractor here to just kind of make sure I'm lining each of those up um, the, right, the right width so they're the same. And so then I hot glued them all on and then once they were hot glued I am just taking some more of the boxwood greeny, greenery that I got this from Walmart. I love their boxwood and I'm just hot gluing some onto the bottom two on each side and then I'm going to make a bow with this ribbon. I got this ribbon a while ago from Hobby Lobby and I love this. I need to use this more. But I just make in my bow like I normally do with the awareness ribbon and tying some twine in the middle. And then I'm going to hot glue that right um, in the middle of uh, the bottom there where the opening is between the greenery. And of course I got a dovetail. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the way this came out. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one too. Uh, it's super easy. And um, yeah, anyways, it's super easy. And then I just put the hanger that was on it back there um, in place. And there it is. And I love the way this came out. I need to use those calendars more often. <laughs> I forget about them sometimes. So if you um, enjoy this video again and you are new, please make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go today. And then make sure you guys um, hit that like button as well. Comment. I love to read your comments and get to know you. Here's the final reveal of all four DIYs. I just love them today. I hope you did too. And if you are interested in Chalk Couture, I am a designer. So you can check the link in my, dis in my description box for um, Chalk Couture or you can always email me if you have any questions or concerns and so let's see what else I just thank all of you guys for being here today I thank you all for watching and coming back whenever you do you all mean the world to me and I am so glad you guys are here every week I am going to be back on Thursday I believe the 12th with another video i am participating in the napkin exchange so uh, until then you guys have a wonderful week and i will see you on the next one bye bye <music>